this is serious and in today's video we're going to be doing a tutorial about teaching your dog how to stand on cue this was a requested video in my training group tricks in the city same name as one of my training books on facebook the link for that's always down below also you can always feel free to leave suggestions for training tutorials you'd like to see in the comment section i keep a list of them that we're always working on so this is a really fun skill it's super useful foundationally for a lot of different sports and also just in real life i love to teach stand i'm a little bit of a weirdo that way and i think it's really really fun we're also going to be covering stand stay a little bit as well all right so when i teach stand there's a couple of ways i teach it i tend to teach stand at the same time that i'm teaching down and sit i treat them as three kind of linked behaviors that i like to introduce my dogs to right away when i'm starting to teach that that said you can absolutely teach a stand cue at any age uh, to your dog every stand. And there's a couple of different ways that you're going to teach it to your dog. The first way you can is to capture it. So you can just click when your dog is standing or when your dog gets up into a stand position and mark the behavior either with a click or with your verbal cue. And so your dog starts to make the association stand good that what you want there is that standing position. So that's one way to teach it. You can also teach stand by luring. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some treats on our dog's nose, we're gonna ask for another behavior they know or lure them into another position, like a sit. And then we're just gonna pull the treats forward, stand good, until they stand up, right? As soon as they get up, you're gonna mark either with your verbal cue or with your clicker. And I find this to be a very, very easy way to very quickly start to teach dogs what a stand position is. Stand, good. And so when we start doing it again, how we're gonna teach it, do you drop that? These are very crumbly. Are these very crumbly? I know. Oh, it fell out of your face, here it is. I know, it's right here. They're kind of crumbly, there it is. Um, when you're teaching it, what we're gonna do again for that luring is if they're in a sit position, we're going to pull the treat straight forward so that they immediately move up into that stand. Uh, from a down, we're going to pull the treat with the lure, so we're gonna have our treat on their nose. We're just gonna pull up and forward, good, and they're gonna move into the stand position. And the more that you work on this, the smoother they're going to get with that movement. And so very quickly, we'll be able to uh, phase out the lure. We're gonna sit. It, I didn't pull any, stand. Good. So to start with, again, we're gonna have that lure on their nose, but very quickly we can start to phase out the lure by just having our hand stand. in front of them and they're going to begin to move towards, move up into position towards your hand. Your goal for positioning should be, let me keep her in camera here, I know. When you are having them stand, to think about what the size of your dog is so that there's room, wait, just, wait, there's just enough room for them to stand so we don't want them taking steps forward. Otherwise, we may accidentally find ourselves training. The, the, what they think what we're looking for is for them to get up and walk when in fact, what we want is just for them to get into a standing position. Stand. So for her, that's gonna be a bit of a larger space than if say you're training a smaller dog. Stand. Just figure out what that space is so that they just have room to get up onto their feet and aren't doing, I'm gonna show you what I mean. Stand. Sit. What we don't want to say is stand, is for them to then have to be taking those steps forward. Instead, what we want, stand, good, is just for them to move into the stand position. If you find your dog is doing feet shuffling as they're getting into stand, that's completely okay. We can clean that up later when they get more familiar with it. But with our positioning of our hands and our lure, we want to do as much as we possibly can to help keep our dogs in position. So now that your dog knows how to stand on cue, and again, obviously the more practice sessions you do, the more you'll be phasing out that lure. You'll be able to get it just down to a small physical or verbal cue. 
you're gonna probably wanna teach your dog to stay in that standing position. This is a skill that's super helpful, both teaching just the standing cue and then to stay in a stand position for a variety of different sports and activities. I really like a standing stay because for a variety of things, right? We use it in obedience, we use it in rally, we use it in freestyle, um, like canine musical freestyle, use it in tricks a lot. And you may even use it in other sports like agility. If you say want to start line stay, there's nothing that says your dog or from rally when you're getting ready to start, nothing there that says your dog has to be in a sit or a down. It's a default position that a lot of people use with dogs like border collies, dogs like shelties that default to that sort of like, you know, very like hurting dog down very easily. But it's not always necessarily what you want for your dog, depending on what your dog's temperament drive energy levels are. So for example, with these giants, I really like starting different skills from a stand because I only just getting into a sit position, getting into a down position takes a lot more energy for her to get up and moving. She can do it really beautifully, really cleanly, um, but it is something that takes more energy. So I like to avoid it when we're doing trick routines, things like that. I'll often start her from a stand position. It just makes things faster. A fun way to start working on their understanding is to do what I like to call puppy push-ups or position changes. Go for seat, down, stand, good, seat, down, stand, down, good girl, stand. Good, and so you're just working on moving between sit down stand in changing your order around. I did it in the same order twice, which is just because I was not really thinking about it. Uh, you can also throw in other behaviors. It's just a fun way to get them ac excited and working on that stand cue. So then when it comes time to teach the stand and stay, there's a variety of different ways to do it. If your dog has a very solid stay cue already from a sit or a down position, they may be able to pretty quickly generalize. But for a lot of dogs, staying in a stand position is a lot more challenging because they're already in motion, right? It's the same reason why maybe if you have a very sort of like frenetic border collie, you might not want to use a stand stay on your start line, or you might, um, because it's very easy for them to suddenly get going and get momentum, which for the same reason might be why I might want to use a stand stay with uh, my noof if we're doing a trick routine, right? It just depends on your dog and the situation and what you're doing. Similarly, if I'm going to ask her to hold a stay before we get into the waters for her to do a water retrieval, a stand is a lot more challenging for her because her drive to get into the water is very, very high. And I might, in that case, use a sit or a down. Uh, but when you're teaching a stand stay, it can really help to have a platform of any kind. You can use anything you want. I'm just gonna use my climb, but giving your dog a structure of something to be on, that is very, very helpful for a lot of dogs. Good girl. Uh, for a lot of dogs who are first learning the behavior. I don't actually really like the climbs. For this with her, I would put two of them together. Uh, it's a little bit tight just for a giant. Good. Oops, yeah. Good. There you go, stay. Good. So you would teach it to the same way you would any other stay. You're going to really thin slice it. And there, I hadn't noticed she had defaulted into a sit on the climb. Good, I agree. But giving them a platform, a place to be can really help. Stand, 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 stand. Good. Is it too tight? Okay, I don't use the climbs for this very often. I forgot how tight it was. I've now taken both of my climbs. Put them together so that it is a big enough space for her to comfortably stand on. Pause. Good. Stand. Stay. Uh, which is what we want. We want it to be a comfortable size for them to then be working on your stay, but giving them a platform to do it on is often really helpful. And then when we're starting to teach a stay, we want to really thin slice that behavior. Pause. Good. Good. Sit. So say they're in a sit, right? We're going to cue their stand that we've taught them. Stand. Good. And we're going to start like we would teach teaching any other kind of stay. Yes. We're just going to ask for a fraction of a second of duration. And then I like to toss a treat to release them uh, when we're releasing them from that stay. And so very slowly. Good. Pause up. Good. Stand. Stay. 
you can start to add in just another second or fraction of a second. Again, depending on how much your dog knows about um, stay cues will in many ways determine how long it takes you to do that duration. But giving them the platform can help a lot of dogs to generalize that what you want them to do is to stay in position. And so then you can start to work on moving away from them, moving directionally and we're coming back and treating, right? Good. Stay. Moving in different positions. Good. Very good. And what we want them to do is to stay in that standing position. And this is really where that platform work comes in very, very helpful because it gives our dog somewhere to be. Good, and then return to your dog and treat your dog. And so this is something you're gonna build up to every, as your dog gets better, and up drop, at the skill and gets more fluency and understanding. So then what you wanna do is to decrease the size of the platform that your dog is on so that it's less, um, less noticeable. Our smaller platform, good. Curl. So then what you would do is, again, you would just put your dog on the platform like you did before. You could curl. Stiff. Good. Stiff. And then you're going to work on that same behavior with a, um, effort, with a lower platform. And I would do that for a few practice sessions, work on the same skills that you were doing about building. Okay. Building time, building movement, all of those things that we want in a stay cue. Get excited, right? We're doing things yes, that are distracting for our dog. We want them to be able to hold their stay during that. Every and when your dog is successful at that point, then I like to, if you've used targeting like that, move them onto a just any kind of flat target disc that you might have and that you might use for other sorts of training. So then you, you can do, all right, good girl, is you can ask your dog target, stay, to stay using that target disc as a, or target plate as a reminder to them that we want them to keep their feet in that position. We want them to stay there. Good girl. Good, serious, target. Stand, stay. And so then we're using that, right? And then operate what we can do when they're successful at that level to begin to understand what we're really asking for them is to stay in position. And we don't actually need the target. You can wean them down to a smaller like a yogurt plate lid if you need to. Good job. But most dogs at that point have figured out Good. that what we're looking for is stand, stay. That stand position. Oh, my cat is coming in. Hello, kitty. There's this thing he likes to supervise. He's a great distraction. Good girl. That what we're looking for is for them to stay in that standing position. Good girl. She did shift her feet there a little tiny bit. I'm not that worried about it. Her front feet stayed still. Um, and that's, oh, you couldn't see them because the cat was there. Good. Stay. And so then... What we're doing is they're able to hold that stay. Woo, we moved, good girl. On the flat, if you find your dog, like she just did there, she's like, I got a little distracted, the cat's here, I've been doing a bunch of stand stays. What you can do is to help your dog with that walk around. Good, I know, stand, stay. Is you can hold a treat on their nose while you're doing stay. This is easier if you have a small dog, good girl. Um, while you move around them. If you find that your dog is like, whoa, you're going behind me, that's hard, good girl. Stay. Yes. Stay. Very nice, good girl. So that's the basics for how I teach, oh, wait, go get it. how I teach a stand stay, how I teach um, a dog to stand on cue. Let me know if this made sense. Let me know if you'd like any other follow-ups on this or if you have other requests for training videos. I'd love to make them for you. Let me know um, how this goes for you if you decide to teach your dog to stand on cue or to do a stand stay. We'd love to know. We really appreciate you watching our videos. 
please, if you have not done so already, like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And we will see you in the next video. Bye! Have fun with your dogs. <laughs>